Welcome back to Definitely Not Definitive. I'm Captain Steve Rogers. And I'm Natasha Romanoff. And together as a couple, we rank all our favorite nerd movies. And uh, we start with the Marvel Cinematic Universe, the MCU. In case you hadn't guessed that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> in case that somehow went over your head. Uh, this is our Halloween episode, and yep. so we're all dressed up for Halloween. I, of course, am choosing the most badass character in the MCU, which is Black Widow. Yes. Thank she's, you. She's, I appreciate the bow down. <laughs> and, uh... You know, I figured if you can't be the man of your woman's dreams, you can certainly dress <laughs> like him. So if you've watched the uh, any of our videos, you know that Bethany has a thing for uh, Captain America. So I mean, it's Chris Evans. Can you blame me? <sighs> I can't dress up like Chris Evans. All right, <laughs> I, can only, I can only dress up like Captain America. Um, but if you like these costumes, uh, we put the links down in the description below of where to get them. Bethany's costume is kind of like. Uh, a hodgepodge of different things. She put it together. That's why hers hers looks fabulous. <laughs> Mine, um, I uh, the material is great. Okay, it's 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 really quality made. It's just obviously too big. I it's mean, it's gigantic. Yeah, I feel like uh, when Hulk marks, makes fun of Thor and he says, "Baby arms, you got baby arms." I feel like I have baby arms in this. <laughs> it's just uh, this is a medium too. Um, so if you're gonna get it. Get it custom sized, all right? So it's quality made, but get it custom sized because the sizing is kind of all over the place uh, as far as I'm concerned. But the mask looks great. Yeah, the mask. Except, can I, can I just do a little something yeah, for you? Yeah, fix me, fix me. Yeah, you're a little crooked. Okay. Better? Much better. All right. There we go. Now, there we go. With that, now on to our review for Captain America Civil War. And our first category is lead male, and in this case, lead male, mm. likability. Yeah, normally, so for Avengers films, we've done Captain America and uh, Iron Man for our lead characters, and this is kind of an Avengers-esque film, even though it's Captain America's uh, name in it. Yeah, I mean, when you think of Civil War, Captain America himself can't have a Civil War, so you must have the Avengers in order for a movie like this to even happen. And our two lead males in this one are Captain America, or Steve Rogers, and Iron Man, also known as Tony Stark. For me, I thought Tony Stark was a three. He's a badass. I mean, there's there's really no denying that. He just, he's Iron Man. He's a badass. Um, but for Steve Rogers, he actually got a four, which is, I want this guy in my inner circle of friends. Um, I think what really uh, made this sort of the deciding factor was the fact that when push came to shove, Tony Stark was overcome with personal guilt Mm. and baggage uh <laughs> being his his separation from pepper Potts and wanting to do the right thing and the politics and the guilt and the, yeah he was it was it was all personal stuff with him whereas with steve rogers when push came to shove it was about his friends what's best for us what's best for the team and the fact that he has that sort of uh community mindset that team mindset i mean god you want that guy in your friends like he puts the team first she pretty much just summed up all my points for them. I gave the exact same score to Iron Man. I gave him a three. And Steve Rogers, I gave him a four. And for Steve Rogers, uh, it's really what he does for Bucky. The fact that he's willing to not give up on Bucky and realize that his friend is still in there even though he's being brainwashed. Um, you know, that's a guy you want in your group of friends. When you're down... and you're, you're brainwashed. Lowest, yeah, when you're down, you're brainwashed, which we, we've all been there, right? <laughs> you know, it's the... Maybe we're not, maybe not by Soviet people, but maybe we're just brainwashed with love. <laughs> or bad relationships. I mean, that brainwashes you too. Yeah. What's that supposed to say? That no, no, I like, say the lovey one. She says the bad relationship. <laughs> I'm just saying, because like you went to the positives. I'm like, well, it can't just be like, hey, when you fall yeah, in so, love, you're like a puppet. I'm like, it can't be all, because that's not the message we want to say. We like to balance each other out, you know? Like, I mean, you know, I do the positive. I love you. She goes, I hate you. I wish we never got <laughs> together. It's, it's, it's the balance. That's why we work. Um, that was definitely not the message I was saying. <laughs> Moving on to our next category of lead male, lead male, bangability. Well, you know me. I love the male bangability. So I gave them both a zero. So unimaginative. Uh, for me, I gave Tony Stark a score of four. I said this will definitely lead to some morning sex, uh, shower sex, thanks to later sex. I mean, it's, it's Iron Man, you know. Like, can you blame a girl? Yeah. But... But for Captain America, he got a score of five, which is this might be more than a bang. 
That's right. <sighs> and in this case, it is more than a bang. Ooh, nice. Give me some sugar. See what I did there? Yeah, yeah. I did. I did. <laughs> um, uh, so for, I mean... Day. <laughs> oh, you just made that so dirty. Um, so for Captain America, I mean, really, it comes down to the whole friend thing. Like, again, he's the guy that's going to be there for you. So, I mean, if you're looking for someone to be more than a bang, he's yeah. the guy that's going to be there for you. It's nice. It's Thanks. nice. Uh, <laughs> you made it dirty, I made it sweet. We balanced each <laughs> other out. Other out. <laughs> So the next category is lead male and, in this case, lead male mm. relatability. Um, so for this one, I give Tony Stark a score of two. I said it's not me, but it could be one of my friends or family. Um, he's struggling with issues. He's got personal relationship issues. He's got some job performance issues, yeah. uh, guilt issues. I think we've all known somebody who's been down on their luck at some point, who's, who's made a bad decision, who's not done the right thing, who's questioning how they should handle something. Um, this is all me that she's talking about right now. <laughs> I, I did not say that. Um, but I think we've all known someone like that, so it's obviously somebody who could be in our friends or family because it's very relatable. Mm. Uh, that being said, I found Captain America even more relatable, and so I gave him a score of three, which is, I think it's the best parts of me. Um, with this, I think it's the best and worst parts of me. With my vicious, stubborn streak, I definitely related to Captain America in this in the... Trust your gut, stick to your guns, do what you believe to be right, even in the face of adversity, even if it's not popular, even if it's not what everyone else is doing. I mean, at the end of the day, that's kind of what you got to trust is your own intuition. I, I gave the same scores. I gave Tony Stark a two, and I gave Steve Rogers a three. And also, again, this goes back to Bucky. I think that, you know, I like to believe that I'm someone that's not going to give up on, uh, you know, someone that I love, someone I care about. And, um, you know, I'm not always the best at maybe keeping in touch with my friends or calling my mom or my brothers. I remind me to do that a lot. Yeah, or, or any of that. But when push comes to shove and you need somebody to be there for you, I, 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 I would like to think that I'm that person that, you know, if you need me, I am there for you. So uh, that's why I gave him a three. Moving on to our villain category. We ultimately decided that Zemo was pulling the strings, kind of like Secretary Pierce was pulling the strings in uh, Captain America the Winter Soldier. So that's what we settled on for the villain. Now his end goal is to destroy the Avengers. How many people does this affect? Well, for me, is there collateral damage in Zemo's plan? Yes, but his ultimate plan is affects the Avengers. So that's why I gave him a one. I said it only affects the heroes, really. I, on the other hand, gave him a score of three. I said a world's health and happiness is at stake in this. Okay. The fact that he doesn't care about the collateral damage, uh, in, addition well, to the, in addition to the fact, I know because I know what you're going to say, so hang on. Before you do that. She knows me so well. She knows, she knows my rebuttal already. I do. Um, in addition to to the fact that the collateral... Natasha <laughs> Romanoff will <laughs> kick your butt. <laughs> Don't even. Um, so in addition to the fact that collateral damage is just okay, it's worth it to him, it's also the fact that what happens to the world if there are no Avengers to protect it? He doesn't care. doesn't bother him at all. Basically, his family is gone, so he doesn't really care what happens to the rest of the world. And for that, I think he's dangerous, and I think it affects the world in, in general. Next up is our uh, how strong is the villain compared to the hero? So, for me, I said he's a little bit weaker than the hero. Um, I think that... Which is a one. Which is one, yes. My apologies. Which is a one. Um, what I think he lacks in physical strength and, and capability... He makes up for in intelligence and total manipulation of our heroes. I mean, he does it masterfully. Yeah, I gave him a zero. I thought he was significantly weaker than the heroes. But that doesn't take away from the fact that I think that that's what makes it so compelling, him going up against uh, the Avengers. He knows he's weaker than the Avengers, so he has to con concoct this plan in order for them to tear each other apart because he knows one-on-one he, -on -one, he can't do anything against them. Our next category is villain likability, I guess. Do you care about the villain, basically? Um, I gave him a four. I was like, is it wrong that I kind of like the guy? Because, one, he knows his limitations and he takes on the Avengers even though he knows he's so much weaker than them. Two, yeah, he's trying to tear them apart, but he's not doing it for power. He's not doing it for money. You know, he's not doing it for any of those lame-ass excuses. He's doing it because he blames them for the death of his, his family. And he's doing it for love and, you know, good old-fashioned revenge. I, I, I applaud that. <laughs> I mean, I didn't like him. Um, 
I gave him a score of one, which is that I care about him only so far as I want the heroes to win. That brings us into villain bangability. Okay. I really like Zemo, but I'm not going to bang him. He gets a zero. And I didn't like him, so he gets You're a definitely zero. definitely not going to bang him. Yeah. <laughs> Up next is side characters. So there are a ton of side characters in this one. Civil War, there's a lot of, you know, there's two sides going head to head. Um, I think this is the most side characters we've had yet. So the side characters we do have are Vision, Scarlet Witch, Black Widow, Falcon, Winter Soldier, uh, Black Panther, Spider-Man, Ant-Man, Sharon Carter, uh, Hawkeye, and Scarlet Witch. Yeah. Did you say War Machine? War Machine. Yeah, I was going to say. I said Scarlet you Witch twice. You did. So yep. War Machine. Because I said Wanda and then I said Scarlet Witch. So War Machine is our uh, final guy. So for my ones, uh, and I have a feeling I'm going to get some pushback on this, possibly from our fans as well, <laughs> but I gave Black Panther a score of one. Um, now, what this means is that he's just there for the plot. This isn't to say that I, I didn't think that his introduction was brilliant. I mean, this is a wonderful setup to the Black Panther movie. It's a great introduction to this character. He's very relatable, very likable. I just didn't feel that he was doing much for our heroes. I felt like he was really there for the plot in this one and to introduce himself. All right, don't worry. I'm here to save Black Panther, all right, and save the respectability of this video. I gave Black Panther a four. I thought that he was essential to this film. I said without, because four is, if you take him out of the film, the movie's barely watchable now. I think if you take him out of this film, the movie becomes significantly less enjoyable. Uh, he steals pretty much every scene that he's in with his fighting style, with his uh, badass lines. He goes, all right, if I'm king and warrior, how long do you think you can keep your friend from me? He says this to Captain America, all right? Just, that's just badass. My twos are Bucky Barnes, Vision, Falcon, Black Widow, Scarlet Witch, Sharon Carter, Hawkeye, and War Machine. How did you give Black Panther a one and you gave Sharon Carter a two? That's what I want to know. Why, why, why Sharon Carter? Um, just because I liked the dynamic between her, Falcon, and Captain America. And I think that she was there to show that Captain America... Cause, oh, like, can, uh, that Captain America can get a girl? I mean, no, come on. no. But the Captain America is kind of coming out of his shell a little bit. I actually ended up giving War Machine, Sharon Carter, Hawkeye, and Scarlet Witch all a one. I said they were just there for the plot. For my twos, I agree the Winter Soldier got a two. I think that his relationship with Captain America, you know, the way that Captain America fights for him, I've said this so many times, that makes Captain America super relatable, super likable. Uh, and I give this for Vision as well, mainly because what Vision does for Wanda. And Vision is kind of the one that starts their relationship and you see it more from his end, how interested he is in Scarlet Witch and kind of his change from being this robot you think that is not going to have any emotional feelings into having such emotional feelings that he ends up missing and is a reason that War Machine kind of gets paralyzed. So let's move on to our threes. I have a feeling we're going to agree on uh, a lot of our threes here. Who'd you give a three to? I gave a three to Spider-Man and Ant-Man. They're just so fish out of water, mm -hmm. awkward in the midst of all of these amazing badasses that it's it's delicious to see how they try to kind of like hold their own. Yeah, I agree. And this is my favorite Spider-Man so far. This is yeah. Spider-Man making jokes as he's kicking your butt. I also gave a three to Falcon. I didn't forget my last character. It's I gave a four to Black Widow. I thought that Black Widow was, was essential to this film. Um, not only for the heart that she brought with Steve Rogers, you know, when she goes to the funeral and he's like, you know, she knows that he's not going to sign the accords. And he's like, why are you here? He's like, well, I thought you needed a friend. Didn't and want you to be alone. Yeah, right now. didn't want she didn't want him to be alone. And I don't know, maybe I'm biased, but without Black Widow, Captain America just just is nothing, you know. I have to admit, I think that your scoring of, of Black Widow is probably right too, because without her, this does all fall apart. I mean, it's so it's her know. playing both sides. Her. Let's go back to the part where I was right. Let's let's re it's repeat her that again. Hearing both points of view from both Captain America and Tony Stark, and understanding them, and being able to go. Yes, Captain America is right with this, but I understand why Tony Stark is thinking that. Yeah. And being the diplomat between these two sides, that really makes it possible for these Avengers not to rip each other apart. So next up is plot, um, which basically is how entertaining was this? How enthralling was this? Mm -hmm. And for me, I gave it a four. I said I wouldn't get up to go to the bathroom or look down at my popcorn. I mean, I thought this plot was very entertaining and very compelling. Yeah, I agree. I got a four, and I kept you guessing kind of the whole way, 
and the introduction of different characters and weaving them in and blending them in, uh, it didn't feel like anything was forced, really. Mm -hmm. Our next category is female empowerment. What role do women play in this film? Yes. She's got a little shield patch right I there. I do, I have a shield patch. I'm gonna make sure she showed it. <laughs> uh, she sewed it on herself. I did, yes. Like I said, costume was definitely pieced together. They were all mismatched pieces. <laughs> Uh, so for female empowerment, I gave it a four. I thought that Black Widow and Scarlet Witch were uh, a, a true hero in, in this one. I gave it a four because I felt Black Widow was a true hero. Mm. While I think Scarlet Witch is the most female empowering character, I don't think she was necessarily the true hero in this. But Black Widow, I did feel was the true hero, being the diplomat, understanding all points of view, having the intelligence to see maybe how to kind of navigate this situation so that everybody can come out perhaps united and back together. Soundtrack. I guess soundtrack too. I thought there were a couple of cool tunes in there. Being that I could think of like one or two cool tunes, I gave it a score of one. Humor. Now, this movie's not very funny. <laughs> um, it's, it's, very, it's a very serious tone throughout the majority of this film, but that scene towards the end where our heroes are fighting each other is jam-packed full of humor. So it really saved its humor score. And my humor got a 38. Mine got a 39. Yeah, so we were, we were right around in there. And this is mainly due to that to that scene and a lot to do with Ant-Man and Spider-Man. Yeah, I mean, and I can't remember exactly, but I feel like my humor score going into that scene where our hero teams are fighting each other in the in the airport, Yeah. Um, I think my humor score was somewhere on maybe 15. I was just about to say 15. I'm like, I, I think there's probably 20 moments in there where I laughed out loud and giggled yeah. and chuckled and, you know, and I don't giggle because I'm, I'm Captain America, but, you know, I laugh like a man. Oh, that is funny. Oh my God, you just did that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you're married. That just happened. Yeah, but you're married to me. Too late. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well. Moving on uh, to our next category, which is visual effects. Um, so for me, I thought this movie was fantastic. Uh, I gave it a score of four, which is my eyes had some eyegasms. Um, the CGI was flawless. Mm -hmm. The fight sequences were flawless. They were entertaining. They laced comedy in there, but they also showed a variety of very different fighting styles for the different characters with different powers and different skills. Um, I just thought, all around, flawless. Yeah. She summed it up beautifully. I gave it a four as well. Moving on to love story. Now, the love story in this one, there was a Sharon Carter and Captain America kind of love story. Yeah. But it was, it was yeah, it was kind of eh. And this is really... But it was a kiss. It wasn't a love story. It was a kiss. Yeah, it's really more about the friendship between Captain America and Iron Man. Totally. And uh, it's pretty devastating. They're, they're vicious fighting in the end scene. Um, so I gave it a four. So if these two ever break up, I'm going to be very upset. And they, they, do, they do break up, and I was, was upset at the end. Yeah, I also gave it a four. Um, I actually got teary-eyed at, at multiple points. The message here is just you need to be open and honest with the people that you love. And, you know, trust in them that, one, they are going to be able to handle it, and, two, that, you know, they'll be able to forgive you. And so it's on, you know. So I think that's a good message. Well said, baby. Thanks. Yeah. That, was, that came more from Captain America than it did for, from me. You know, wearing this outfit, I just feel more righteous. <laughs> <laughs> so next up is dialogue. And I gave this a score of four. I just thought they did a great job writing for each individual character. Mm. And not just staying true to the character, but also keeping in mind the actors who were playing these characters so that they could really play to their skills and their strengths and their kinds of humor. Uh, <laughs> you make a great argument. I gave it a three. I said it was sharp, it was clever, it was witty, but I mean, it probably deserved a four. But I gave it a three. I'm going to stick with it because I'm stubborn. Action sequences. There were five action sequences in this one, and they, they were s spread out a little bit. Like, you get one right away, and then there's a long gap before before the next one happens. And um, and then they kind of, they happen a little bit faster after that. But all the action sequences were amazing. And so I gave it a four, and I was sad when they ended, so that gives it a total action score of 20. I gave it the exact same score. I mean, again, what I said before with the visual effects, I think they did such a wonderful job with these action sequences catering it to the individual mm -hmm. heroes. I mean, what are their strengths? What are their tools? How do they use those? What's their fighting style? Is this a personal fight or is this just business? I mean, I think they've sprinkled this in previous films and done a good job with it. But in this one, they did it 
all around. And it's kind of what this movie demanded. And they rose to that challenge and then some. Yeah. And for me, I always love it when our heroes fight each other. Uh, you know, not in a vicious way, obviously, although Black Panther is pretty vicious. Yeah. Uh, he's out for blood, and you can't blame him. Um, but, you know, to see that the heroes that don't normally fight each other go against each other and use their powers against each other, I, I, just, I just think that was cool. And that final scene in The Hangar was, quite frankly, maybe one of the best scenes ever in any Marvel movie. Um, the humor, the action scenes... Like that, like, you know, the fighting styles themselves. When he says the final scene in the hangar, I think what he means is the big fight in yeah. the airplane hangar, not the final. Sorry, scene. yeah, yeah, the big fight in the airplane hangar between our two between our two sides of heroes. I think that's probably one of the best scenes. Our last category is heart. So, how moving was this film? How did it affect you on an emotional level? Um, I gave it a, a ooh, I gave it a three. I said yeah. I got a little misty eyed, and as I'm recapping it, I'm like, man, maybe I should have given it a four. Yeah, I think That's you should have. Yeah, it's just... Because <laughs> uh, I gave it a four. I mean, I think... I already mentioned two parts where I got misty-eyed. Also, when War Machine goes down, I mean, I... I audibly gasped. Mm. Let's move on to our final score, though, for a happy thought. <laughs> so my final score for Captain America Civil War was 124. Mine was 134. But... It did not lose any points, so... <laughs> <laughs> gotcha! <laughs> uh, that means our combined score is 129, which uh, puts it just below no, uh, Avengers. So it's number three right now on our, on our list. So if you like the video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. It really helps us out. And subscribe to our channel. And, uh, you know, if we reach 100 subscribers, we're going to do a baby group dance video. And if we reach 200 subscribers, we're going to release a bad reenactment video where we reenact terribly a scene from Avengers Age of Ultron. You won't want to miss that, and so let's get to 200 subscribers. And we don't have the budget of Marvel, so you know it's going to be terrible. Which gives you full rights to mock us viciously, because what else is the internet for, right? Exactly. Uh, you know, we made our scoring sheet available down in the description below, so you can either fill it out online or download it. Go ahead and post your score after re-watching these videos down in the comments below this video. Our score was 129. But that is definitely not definitive. Happy Halloween, everybody. Happy Halloween.